from Barangaroo Studios, the AusBiz COV is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Oh, I'm doing it. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the COB. You just had two stunned... I had two sips two, of wine and I forgot what I'd agreed to do. Two, Hello. Two stunned mullets <laughs> in, on the screen. Anyway, we're not stunned mullets. I'm Danny Okuye here with... Juliet Sally. That is my name. I remember now. Um, <laughs> and it okay. is a, a happy Friday, except for the market, which, look, the ASX 200 is down almost half a percent or 34 points below that crucial 7,000 level and look at the SIBO 200 jewels couldn't yeah. find any happiness there off by four tenths of a percent about five and a half points but we did talk about Danny just before we came on about the the rally you're seeing in the iron ore players which is really interesting because you've still got that seven month high for iron ore so Fortescue BHP looking quite good in the close but as you say it is a, a overall downbeat day yeah and I've got a wee statistic here so I love a wee mm. st statistic so let's uh, just look at those material stocks which as uh, Jules just said we're actually in the green today but also they have the best uh, one of the best monthly performances the sector is up by over one percent but uh, yeah it was obviously a weak lead from Wall Street wasn't yeah. it Jules Powell really, Jay Powell really rained sort of, on the party well yeah he was talking at the IMF he was uh, disrupted by a climate protester and he disrupted the markets as well do you see what I did there because he came through basically saying that you know they will not have hesitate to raise again, which we've heard before, if conditions uh, mean that they need to. So that really just got a lot of concern coming through in the bond market. You saw a sell-off in equities as well, and that's flowed through into our region. But also we had the RBA statement on monetary policy, the SOMP, SOMP, um, <laughs> the SOMP today. And, you know, they are still worried about inflation too. Totally. So they've upgraded inflation expectations, upgraded growth expectations. Uh, Barclays just making the point that they're going to stay higher for longer and Barclays looking for a rate cut now only to come in the fourth quarter of 24 but generally yeah it markets again didn't like that although the Aussie dollar just really interesting I'll just bring it up because mm. it's continued to be a little bit weak and I was chatting to a few people on Twitter about this yeah uh, Scotty and a few others and just generally saying that the Aussie dollar is probably more reflective of uh, a trade on a global growth at the moment but we were also talking about News Corp and REA because they reported today it looks like REA's results were pretty much in line with expectations 14 percent growth in earnings I think news was about uh, three percent second quarter of yeah. growth but you wanted to touch on the AI transition. Well I thought this was really interesting because essentially also we've got to remember it's the last quarter for Chairman R uh, Rupert Murdoch he's transitioning to Chairman Emeritus at the AGM next week uh, look they did beat News Corp in terms mm. of the first quarter revenue and profit but they said that they are in advanced talks to strike deals to use generative AI to create content oh. so we know there's been these strikes in Hollywood about concerns over AI yep. uh, taking over in terms of some of the actors the writers what does it mean for journalists as well when companies uh, news organizations start to focus more on AI now obviously investors like this if you've got cost cuts mm. it's going to boost mm. revenue but uh, it does mean that once again the landscape of journalism could changing. change should we let them into a secret yes we're avatars <laughs> We're actually the same person. <laughs> we just thought we'd spoof you today because it's a happy Friday. Indeed. And uh, we just lost the last theme, but that is basically macro headwinds. And that comes from central banks continuing to put the foot on the brake. And also, too, we have those debt ceiling negotiations yes. starting up again next Friday. So uh, just remember, folks, we could have shut down. Now, mm. let's turn to some of the sectors and see how they have been performing today. And uh, banks, well. well, NAB taking a bit of a tumble, as has Westpac off by about 1.7%, but they're all in the red today. So profit taking across the board. Yeah, and in looking at the energy space, um, we did see crude oil prices actually rebound from those three month lows, but you've only got Ampol in the black there in our market, Woodside down 2.2%, Santos, Fever Energy, Beach Energy, all in the red as well. And the utilities, let's have a check in there. Uh, a bit of bit of a bit of profit taking there, not too bad. APA off 0.6%, AGL about a half percent, and Infratil off a one percent. 
All right, let's get to some of the top stories. We talked about News Corp there uh, with its re report in net income in terms of that headline number, but we do have to point out that it beat Wall Street targets for first quarter revenue and profit. It has closed higher by a tenth of 1%. REA Group, Danny, you mentioned that uh, earlier, of course, the offshoot from News Corp as well. Yeah, so what they were saying in the results is they have experienced a particularly strong winter period and which has continued into spring, which actually boosted results. But look, a bit of profit taking off 2%, hardly surprising because we have seen a rally in the share price. Mm, and South Across Media, this is really interesting because they confirmed that the Australian community media has made an approach to merge the companies. And this comes as Southern Cross executives have been trying to drum up wider interest in the business to counter this offer from ARN. I mean, it will be huge if you see a tie up between ARN and Southern Cross. They've always had the rival radio station. Oh. So that's, you know, bringing together the likes of KISS and uh, Today FM together. Well, um, of course, we have also been looking at a cancer drug company. Yeah, so Imogen, we have watched every day as the <laughs> stock prices rallied. Now, it's just interesting to note they did actually trade up 13% this morning, but they're closing down almost 4.5%. But this is following the start of the much anticipated drug trial. So uh, it has been, I think, I hadn't checked the numbers, but remember each day we'd come in and it was yeah, up go, another why? Why 10, is this 10 or 15%. <laughs> But let's move to the stock of the day, which was REA Group. And I was joined by Luke Winchester from Merriweather Capital and Mark Gardner from MPC Markets. I think it's a pretty comfortable hold, particularly for people who have maybe been there for a while, um, you know, and, and, and maybe tax decisions or something like that factoring into to how they're thinking. Um, I'd be on the sidelines, though, if you're new money. I mean, this is one that, that chart sort of sums it up there. You do get those little 10, 15 percent pullbacks on macro and, and, and whatnot. So I, I maybe wouldn't be jumping in today um, with new money, but but certainly a hold, just given the quality of the business. And as I said, it's, it's quite impressive how they're flexing that that operational muscle over their network effect right now. Um, I would not be buying for new money. I, I did like the figures. They are a great company. Um, yeah, I wholly, wholeheartedly agree with what Luke said. I'd be um, just buying on dips if you wanted to get into it. And um, I think that India business is, is going relatively well. They need to expand because they are so dominant here. Um, and that may, you know, force a bit of a readjustment in that, um, you know, in that high price uh, because you, unless you expand, obviously you can't, you can't continue that growth. So, um, but yeah, I think it's, it's, it's almost single-handedly holding up News Corp at the moment. Uh, <laughs> So both of our guests on the call pretty much saying REA Group is a hold at the moment. Mm. Jules, now welcome to the CEOB. Henry Jennings from Marcus Today joins us now. Henry, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. It's almost like looking at twins when I see you two. The we're, only difference is the colour of your shirt. <laughs> we're, we are. We're sisters. Um, we're, we're avatars, <laughs> didn't you know? We're doing the AI thing today, Henry. No, but well, I, you, I agree. We, we could be sisters. Let's you got rock be. with that. You, All right. So I, I will take that I, as a, a massive, massive compliment <laughs> from, well, from so both of I. you. So will I. All right, Henry, I've got a wine in my hand. Yep. Cheers to you for the end of the week. Um, to wanting you. to get your thoughts on what Jay Powell said at the IMF and how that's kind of rattled bond and equity uh, markets. Well, you mean apart from swearing? I was about to say, not the door closing <laughs> not part, Not the door closing Henry. part, no. Wasn't that good? Jay Powell is not an avatar. He's actually a real person that can <laughs> say a swear word. Um, I guess that was kind of interesting. Uh, it's, it's such a strange one, isn't it? Because we seem to get one day a, a one sort of Jay Powell out, uh, a hawkish one, and then the next day we'll get a dovish one, and then we'll sort of go back to a dovish, then a hawkish. You never know what you're going to get. I guess, you know, it's, um, maybe it's Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. And uh, you never know what you're going to get with Jay Powell. Last night, of course, he was in the hawkish camp. It didn't really help, I guess, in terms of markets that uh, we had that Treasury auction that was less than successful. I mean, I guess they got it away, but... Uh, the market wanted more for that uh, in terms of yields, so that probably didn't help. There was also a bit of a um, a bit of an IC uh, BC, I think it is one of their platforms had a bit of a uh, uh, a cyber attack on it, which probably didn't help either. So you know, you add up all those factors, and it's easy to see why after eight days of U.S. rallies, 
that uh, last night it came to a halt. I wouldn't say a crashing halt, uh, but certainly a pause. You know, at the end of the day, I don't think J Jerome Powell said anything that we didn't really expect. The same with the RBA, mm -hmm. uh, the SOMP uh, today, the statement Somp. of monetary policy. <laughs> Isn't that a great phrase, the SOMP? <laughs> what do you mean, the SOMP? <laughs> Sorry, I'm joking. <laughs> Henry, you seem to have moved. Yeah. You've got Bondi behind you instead of Avalon. What am I missing? <laughs> Nothing at all, uh, at all, Danielle. I just thought it would be a nice sort of Friday afternoon difference, a little less boring than just the plain white sheet. I love it. Me. Okay, so. let, let, let's move on to iron ore, 130, the Dalian iron ore, $130 a tonne. Now, who would have thunk it? Every analyst yeah. in the world was going, I, iron ore's going down. And of course, it's gone completely yeah. in the opposite direction. Uh, what on earth is going on, Henry? Well, I've got to say, I, I think it just goes to show what absolutely useless most of the analysts have been in this space, uh, if nothing else. And now those same analysts that were... Uh, talking about its demise, as uh, Oscar Wilde, well, Mark Twain rather, would do, um, are now upgrading their iron ore forecast to $130 a tonne. Now, you've got to remember that uh, the last time we saw really elevated iron ore prices, you know, when they were $180, $200 a tonne, we had the Aussie at parity. Now we've got the Aussie at 63 cents. That iron ore price is nearly 200 bucks mm. in terms of Aussie dollar iron ore price. That is a ferociously aggressive and beautiful price. I'm sure that's the reason why Rio Fortescue and BHP to a lesser extent, but certainly Rio and Fortescue are continuing to power ahead and are really holding up this market and have been, I guess, the, the solid state, uh, although we have had a little wobble earlier this week, but generally they have been pretty good. I, I don't know how we can talk about global growth and lack of Chinese stimulus, etc., and in the same breath be upgrading the iron ore price, which clearly is uh, is you know is defying gravity mm. at the moment. How long remains to be seen. But all those people that uh, wrote it off and then have seen it rally and now writing it back on, you have to ask the question whether at some stage uh, they're going to be uh, forecasting the top, having forecast the bottom. So it might be a contrarian view to uh, to start taking a little profits in some of these iron ore stocks. All right. And uh, apparently in small cap land as well, just reading your report on Marcus today, the honeymoon potentially over there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the honeymoon never really started. The honeymoon was really in uh, zero. I did a I do a thing every day uh, called Henry's Take, and I started doing a Henry's Take Down, which wasn't meant as a short selling report, but I did one on zero uh, back in July when they were about 120 bucks and suggested that maybe things were uh, a little bit complacent in zero land and that maybe we'd seen the best of them. And of course, we have seen, uh, I guess, a, a change in strategy from the new CEO, which hasn't really gone down well with the market, which, you know, to be honest, is quite surprising because for many years, Zero have pursued this growth at any kind of cost story in the US, throwing money at trying to get subscribers there. And uh, the new CEO has pulled back from that. She's sort of focused the group more on profit rather than just throwing money at the, uh, the issue in the US. And they have made a profit, which has been quite a long time coming. But there has been a slowing in the US, a slowing in the UK, which has really hurt them. Stock's still hovering around 100 bucks. So it has come off a long way. I guess the question is from here, but certainly that honeymoon period that the new CEO had uh, is uh, does look as if it's over for the time being. Sakindra um, Cassidy, the uh, CEO there. Yeah, transitioning to profits in this sort of environment isn't that easy. Hey, I know it's supposed to be. That's what they're supposed to do. You know, you're supposed to make profits. You know, at the end of the day, what? Just is that how it works? Really? Is that what it yeah. is? <laughs> We've been missing that. Oh, oh damn! I missed that one. <laughs> I know. It's, it's strange, isn't it? You go from no no making profits to making profits, and the share market rewards you by smacking you 20% down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. dear. They should never listen to the share market. Silly, silly, silly. <laughs> no. Hey, what's Chris silly. Ellison up to? He's, he's, he's diving <laughs> deeper into lithium. Um, so yeah. is he preempting market con consolidation in terms of like there's just way too many players? Well, the, the, to be honest, uh, Daniel, there's way too much lithium. To well, be there's that honest. too. <laughs> That, well, that, there's lots of, uh, that, there's a remarkable phenomenon going on at the moment. There's every man and his dog who um, has got anything on the ground that's pegged is now assaying or chipping rocks or try, doing soil samples from assays of days of yore and finding uh, lithium. 
are remarkable because it's quite common. Uh, the, the problem is, of course, trying to find enough of it economically and shallow, et cetera, to make it worthwhile to mine it. And then you've got to get the project, the finance, et cetera. It takes a long time. Chris Ellison and Gina Reinhardt have been making plays to consolidate, I guess, the WA sector in terms of the lithium plays. Pantoro is the latest one, usually more uh, kind of a gold stock. But uh, where there's gold, there's lithium. Mm. And that's certainly something that they've moved on. And they have uh, done a deal today. I think it was 60 million bucks they paid for uh, uh, some of the lithium and other mineral rights. Yeah. So you know it is all happening. When you look at you've got Wildcat happening, you've got Azure. We've had Lion Town, uh, and uh, there's a few other deals in the pipeline. Delta as well. So there's quite an LPI Lithium Power International. There's a lot going on in the lithium space. The only place that it's missing is the big stocks, which are just getting carted out day by day and sold down. Whereas if you're an explorer with a hammer and you're chipping <laughs> rocks, go for it, guys. You're 100% up in the day. Punter's paradise. Yeah. Henry, we know you've got to go. We do too. I've, I've got to get off and um, try and get my niece tickets to Taylor. Tay Tay. Tay Tay. Tay Tay. Get, right. get me a ticket okay, as well. If I, I'll if I get and Shane four, Oliver. And, and Shane, <laughs> Shane Oliver. So me, my niece. I don't want to see yeah. Shane oh, Oliver. Yeah, okay. Well, you and Shane are going to have to Oliver. fight it out because I've got two nieces and me. So I have one ticket left. Henry, have a great weekend. Henry Jennings from Marcus and today. You. Okay, let's check in with the uh, leaders and the laggards and see those stocks that have been moving or not moving the market. Neuron Pharmaceuticals up by over 10%. Also, Breville. Haven't seen that one for a while. No, but uh, that was interesting because it had the broker um, upgrade yesterday, right. remember? So still rising on the back of that 3.8%. Yeah. Okay. Domain catching some love, having been sold down after their results, up 2.9%. And of course, REA off by about 22 And Deterra Royalties. Well, clearly people are enjoying that higher iron ore price and Deterra Royalties is what it says. It gets the royalties from iron ore. So up 2.1%. Let's have a look at the laggards. Indeed, and uh, we are seeing some movement in, there we, there we go, Siona Mining down 7.5%, Chalice off by 7 Core Lithium, and we were just having the chat there oh, with... Lithium uh, getting smashed yeah, again. getting smashed again, down 5%, 37 cents. Helios, of course, we touched on yesterday, so down 4.5%. And Pilbara Minerals, which is normally everybody's top pick in the lithium space, off 4.5%. Let's have a look at what's happening in small cap land. Or not. No. <laughs> Let's have a look at what's happening. I think happening. it is Friday. There's a few... Gr oh, there we go. Pantoro is up 20% of Eta Medical, up almost 18. Step one. Do you know step one? They make bamboo underwear. It makes and me I... think of step one. You can have so much fun. Do you remember that song or is that... No. I, I think it was New Kids on the Block. Oh, okay. Yeah, anyway, we. I have to, I have to say that the, my son and my husband definitely like step one. So up 14%. Anyway, we go diverge. Let's move on to the small cap lag. Guards. And Strickland Metals off by 11%. Pan Continental Energy off 9 And Bougainville Copper. Do you know Bougainville Copper is one of the oldest companies on the ASX? Really? It has been knocking around. And that mine is not like you can't get it off the ground, but people still live it's... in hope off by 9%. Okay. So let's move on and see what is happening overnight, Jules. Indeed. So I think we're looking at what might happen next week. So we're going to have the NAB business survey, the consumer confidence uh, figures for November, CBA's household spending insights will come through, uh, overseas arrivals and departures as well. And then I guess this is what we're looking for overnight and weekend. Uh, we have... Uh, I think that's next week. We have consumer CPI, US retail sales, China monthly data, US industrial production and US housing starts. But I, that house, that CPI oh, well, I can tell you is, what's happening tonight, is, then. is next week. It's um, only the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey. Yeah. That's not, that's it. not, not very keep exciting. people away too much. But we do have the big US CPI next week. I think it's towards the back end of next week from memory. But let's do a quick wrap in terms of how the market performs. So the ASX 200 did close down by 38 points, um, just over half a percent to 6,976. And uh, look, the minis the, uh, are trading positive, so we'll have mm. to wait and see if we actually get some green on screen there. And the Aussie, little Aussie battler, as I love to call it, because it's done a lot of battling this year, yeah. uh, is currently, no, that's the US dollar Swiss franc. We don't know what that, even though I am half Swiss. Uh, so about 63 and a half cents.
sense, folks. And I think healthcare, the only sector higher today, so a bit of yeah. defensive play there. But Wasn't, utilities... Didn't materials end up in the green? They were. It doesn't look oh, like okay. the whole sector is. Okay. Um, I have to go to my iris, but one moment. It doesn't know because you've got this big drag in Pilbara and um, the like. Lithium yeah, getting sold out. Some of the gold players. All right. So, registrations. Yeah, registrations are now open for our next virtual investor event. Small Caps Big Ideas is back for 2023 and will be bigger and better and faster. And if you were not a subscriber in previous years, well, we bring together 10 of Australia's leading small cap fund managers to each present one high conviction idea. This year, we're throwing in a Fast and Furious special edition of The Call featuring micro caps chosen by you. And register to watch live or on demand at osbiz.co slash smallcaps23. That's osbiz.co slash smallcaps23. Jules. Cheers. I, we made it. Cheers. We did. <laughs> Happy To Friday. the Avatar sisters. Exactly. <laughs> well, we've got to turn ourselves off now and we'll just sleep behind there and we'll be turned back on on Monday. We'll catch you then. Have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.